Hi everybody, Jessie here from jessiebanks.com and welcome back to another Stamp Stash Saturday. So I am doing this with Carissa, which is Inky Fairy Designs. I will have her link in the description box below as well as in the annotations here in the corner or cards or whatever it is they call them as long as I can figure out how to do that. So for today's video, I pulled out the Wild About You set from My Favorite Things. Um, link to the description or to the stamp set of course will be in the description box below. I haven't used this stamp set. I didn't pick it up all that long ago. I grabbed it and I've wanted it for a while so I added it to a recent order. So I'm going to color up the zebra, the giraffe, and the crocodile or alligator, whatever you wish to call it in this set. Um, I am definitely coloring it up far from traditional colors. We're going to have a primarily pink giraffe and a primarily blue zebra and a purple crocodile because we can color things any color we want with our markers or pencils or watercolors or whatever it is you choose to use. So the purpose in these videos is to get using your stamps. Um, I'm probably not the only person that has bought stamps that has never seen ink or been on a card or anything of that nature and I really want to get using them. It's the same principle like Carissa came up with the idea and I saw her first one. I was like, ah, stealing that. And she's like, how about we work together on it? And I'm like, sounds fabulous. So, um, I don't have as many stamps that I haven't used as I thought I did. But, um, once I get to the point where I've used all or the majority or whatever, I will start using stamps again. I find a lot of the time I tend to use stamps once, then I don't touch them again. And when you're paying like $15 per stamp set American and I'm in Canada, so... When you do the exchange rate on that, a stamp set cost me like 20 bucks. Well, 18, something like that. I don't know. Depends on the day. But that's a lot of money just to make one card with. So I'm hoping to get a lot more use out of my cards this year with this series and with my Watercolor Wednesday series. And then just anything else I can get done in between. And um, all the cards that I post over on my blog that don't get videos and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm really hoping to get a lot of use and make a ton of cards this year. So... Fingers crossed that I can keep on track like this. Having another person to work with really helps with that. So that's awesome that me and Chris are doing this together. Um, yeah, so we're coloring up our giraffe here. I do put all of my marker caps on the side as I'm coloring so you guys can see what colors I am using. Um, I did a little bit of blending and coloring when the camera was off just to get that light color blended. I am using a different paper here. This is Nina um, Solar White. 80 pound cardstock. I don't usually use this for my Copic markers, but I opened up my new pack of Copic Expressit paper not that long ago, and I found that my markers seem to be leaving a real sticky residue on it a lot of the time, and my markers, I mean, they're not spotlessly clean or anything like that, but they're not absolutely filthy either, and I'm finding some colors I'm having to clean, like, more than once when using it on an image, so I'm not sure if I have a flaw in my paper or whatever. I'm going to email them later and see what's up with that, but so I'm using uh, Nina paper, which tends to bleed just a little bit more than what I'm used to, which is, which is fine. Um, it's just going to take a little bit to get used to it, but I really am liking the way that everything is coming together and working and all of that jazz. So I'm giving him some pink and green stripes as well as some pink hair and a, or I mean green hair and a pink little heart. Green, pink hair. Well, you're coloring it with green, Jesse. Yes. Look at what you're doing before you speak. <laughs> I love these little guys. They turn out so cute. So just going in with three different greens. I'm keeping the blending pretty simple. Um, in the bigger areas, I'm using more markers. You don't have to. You can definitely blend these all out with three colors if you want. I just, I have a large collection of Copic markers. I've been collecting Copic markers for like six years now and still don't have a complete set. So it's a slow process. But now that I have them, I like to use them. So it makes my life a little easier if I use more markers to get a blend, I'm going to do that. If you don't have that, it's definitely not a requirement. Don't forget, you can always do tip to tip technique if you find that you have too big of a gap um, in order to create that, that smooth transition between all of your colors and just take your time and blend it out. Some people need to put two layers, some need people need to put one. Whatever works for you. In terms of my shading, again, um, Anytime there's an image in front, it casts a shadow on what's behind it. So like his snout is casting a shadow on his face because it looks like it's a separate shape in front of him. I'm also doing um, a shadow on the bottom edge of all of the little bumps down his back. I guess they're supposed to be hair. I'm coloring them the same color as his body. Whatever. Um, simply because it looks like that 
there's a line, like an artist drawn line there, so I'm taking it as though those little bumps are kind of slightly set back. Um, I am creating shadows from both sides just to give it a little bit of roundness and fullness to the shape, all that kind of stuff. It just takes a little time in practicing and really thinking about what you're doing. If you are having issues with blending or where you should be putting, not blending, but where you should be putting shadows and things of that nature, don't start, don't stress light source and all of that. I know people preach and preach and preach about light source. If you're coloring for a card, have fun first. Worry about light source and that once you can get to the point where you're enjoying coloring. Don't, don't stress over it. Nobody's going to notice. Um, but you can always, uh, Google or look on Pinterest or anything or on the company's blogs for their designers for how they've colored up the images, which will give you an idea as to where they're putting shadows. And then you just use your colors and put the shadows where theirs are. That always works too. It's a great way to learn and learn from some of the best in the business when you're learning at, when you're learning from the manufacturers, blogs and things, because those are the people that are coloring that company stamps all the time or anybody else you truly admire in the card making world, whatever it, it always helps to look at somebody else's work to kind of give you an idea of what you're doing. So now we're going to do his little snout here. I am coloring it in the same colors, but I am going to leave a lighter ring around it just to give it a little bit more separation from the back of the body. Um, and just so it doesn't look like it all blends it, especially around that neck there where everything's a little bit darker. I don't want it to all kind of meld together. I want a little bit of separation there. So that's why I'm doing that just on his mouth. Just blending that out. So my son turned eight yesterday. That was super exciting. We took him out for supper um, just with family and stuff. I'll have his birthday party in a couple of weeks, but he really enjoyed that. I got him a haircut. He told my uncle who came with us. It was like me, my mom, my dad, my sister and her family, my grandmother and my aunt and uncle. And he told my uncle, well, my uncle said to him, um, you only get your haircut once a year? Caleb goes, yeah, pretty much. Only on my birthday. I was like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. Gee, thanks for making me look like I never get your haircut. Or could it be the fact that you've refused a haircut for the last six months? But, you know, he's eight now, so that's awesome. I've kept something alive for eight years. Um, if you knew my my long history of being a plant killer, you would understand why that is super exciting. Oh, poor plants. I'm doing better. I used to kill everything. I've got things that have, like, I have I have two aloe plants that have been alive over a year. And a succulent that I've kept alive for a couple of years, which don't need much water, is probably why they're still alive. But, you know, gotta do what you gotta do. So now we're coloring a truly realistic purple crocodile here. <laughs> I like having, I like the way purple, teal, and pink look together. So that's kind of why I went with um, doing them all in those colors. And then it gives you, gave me a real bright, a real bright pop of color for the images to put on top of the background. Which at this point I had no idea what it was going to be. I just knew that I wanted to use the stamp set. But I really enjoy coloring things bright and I like bright colors and stuff. So it was fun to do that. And we're just slowly adding in our shadows. I just wanted to create a little bit of texture on his little humps. I don't know, scales on his back, I guess is what they are. I'm not sure what to call them. So that's why I added a little bit of darker shading on the one side of all of them. I do find that this V05 and then I use V01 is quite a jump, but the 04 marker is really, really neon. So I usually leave it out, which doesn't turn mean that I put two coats on this guy as opposed to one. And I, when I do the second coat, you'll see I'll come right in with that V06 instead of the nine. I didn't need any more of the nine. That color stays really, really dark. It's a super deep color. So I just skipped it and started with the next one just to create a softer blend and transition between the colors, which is what I'm after. So we do this and then we'll come back in and start over. So we'll do that V0605. Oh, I didn't put the lid down. This is V06. It's off to the side. Apparently I didn't get it on camera. I was babbling and not watching if I got the other ones on camera. So I hope I did. <laughs> but anyway, so we'll start with V06 here and put that one. And then the 05 marker. And just continuing to blend all of that out and trying to get as smooth of a transition between all of the colors that I can possibly get here. It's not going to be perfect, but I think it turned out absolutely adorable in the end. And they do change a little bit and tend to melt together a little bit more as the paper starts to dry itself out and that alcohol evaporates out of it. So V01. I realized I missed that little spot on his leg and I come back. 
So now I'm going to take this EK Success um, journaling pen and I'm going to outline all of my images there. I just showed you the one line because my hand's going to be in the way with the way I hold it vertically. And then I'm just going to show you that piece and fussy cutting them all out. Ta-da! They are done. And now we are going to watercolor on our background. I wasn't sure what I was going to do when I started. So this is a scrap piece of paper of 300 pound Arches Cold Press watercolor paper. So it gives it lots of texture in the back, which I really, really enjoy. And I think it turned out fabulous. And when I have little scraps like this, the piece was only like four and a half inches wide. So I cut it down and use it on a card front. I don't want to waste it, so I might as well use it on this. I'm never going to use it for a, like a formal painting at this rate. So I'm just taking these two colors that you see there from the Zig Kira, no, the Kiritake Gonzai Tambi watercolors. And this is just the 12 color set, I think it is. And I'm just using the first red and the first yellow in the set. And I'm just letting them blend together and then I'll dry them up with my heat gun. I'm wiping off just the excess around the edge. I'm going to tip it around and dry it up with my heat gun. I don't believe I filmed any of that. So then I come in here. These are from my favorite things as well. This is the, um, the cloud stencil and then the mini cloud stencil. And I'm just using some mustard seed distress ink, which is very, very close to the color of paint that I used. Um, so it's just going to give it a little bit of a faint cloud like shape in the background. I'm kind of picturing these guys like out on a safari. I should have drawn a tree in the background. I didn't next time. So just to give it a little bit of texture so it does look like a little bit of a yellow sky as opposed to just the gradient. Then we're going to pull our tape off and I use the back of my Martha Stewart scoreboard because all of my boards were upstairs so I didn't have anything to tape it to. And that's that. Now we're going to white heat emboss our sentiment here which reads what makes you different, no, what makes you different makes you special. So I'm just going to use my powder tool and then Versa Versamark ink. And I have Stempedis, white Stempedis embossing powder. And we're going to heat emboss that on a piece of black cardstock here just so it pops out really nice. Gives my little guys something to kind of stand on. So it works out really well here. And that's just a scrap piece of paper I use to shovel it or to spoon it on. And then we're going to heat set that with my heat tool, making sure that it's super hot before I even take it anywhere near the paper. And once it turns shiny, it's melted and I stop. So I used um, some, what is this, score tape. I didn't want to use anything too weak simply because of how thick this paper is. I wanted something that was going to make sure it stuck and didn't pop up off of the card base. So we do that. Then I'm going to cut this guy into a banner and put um, foam tape on the back of it. I buy my foam tape at the dollar store. It's not archival. It works fantastic. It costs me a buck and a quarter a roll. Um, I do add a little bit of liquid adhesive on the side of the foam tape that is going to glue it down to the paper below it, like to the, what the background is on. And that's because that's cotton paper because it is 100% cotton watercolor paper. So it's more of a fabric feel and I find sometimes that um, things like foam tape and that will just come loose off of it. It doesn't adhere very well so that just helps it stick down really good. Then we're going to put our little crocodile on there. I'm going to start by gluing my giraffe and my zebra flat on the background and then our crocodile is going to pop up on top. So we're going to glue him down, just making sure that his head's going to kind of stick above a little bit. Push him down really well. Put our giraffe on. And then we'll pop our crocodile up on foam tape and add him on top. And that'll be the majority of the card. So definitely check out the links to Chris's channel down below. Um, my blog is down there. My Cards and Color Facebook group is down there. If you aren't a member of that, you should join. We have lots of fun over there. Um, and links to all the pro links to products and everything. So I hope you guys enjoy these. I'm really enjoying the Stamp Stash Saturday. Um, I know this is only the second um, week of me doing it, but I'm really hoping to keep with it. I do have next week's already filmed, so I can guarantee you there'll be a third one. <laughs> that means anything. But if you guys really like this idea of seeing these um, types of videos and using stamps that I've had in my stash for a long time and haven't been used at all or have only been used once, please give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below just so I know you guys enjoy this kind of a thing and then I will keep working on them and definitely make them a priority to keep bringing them to you guys every week. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys very soon in the next video. Bye for now.